Hello everyone, a very warm welcome and thank you so much for joining this session. My name is Karan and today I'll be talking about why clean code is no longer a myth. So before I begin with the presentation, I would like to thank the entire team of the Reliable Web Summit 20, 2021 for uh, giving me this opportunity to present my talk. So thanks so much. So here is a brief background about me. So I have been working primarily as an Android developer for the past five plus years now. I have been mainly involved also in working on cutting edge technologies like AI, AR and VR. More recently, I have been involved in developing web applications using Angular and React. And my current work assignment includes developing mobile applications using React Native. And apart from being passionate about technology, I also love writing poems, traveling to different places across the globe and meeting new people. So that's about me in a nutshell. Now, needless to say that most of us are working in software projects which are agile in nature and which is mainly characterized by the fact that it is more result oriented. It also helps us to achieve a continuous improvement and no longer are we working in silos, but we are all part of either you know, small or medium sized uh, cross functional teams. Now the second block talks about software design principles. Now these, are, these software design principles have been there for quite some time now. However, it is the lack of the early adoption of these principles in the software development lifecycle that has created a lot of concerns. Now, more often than not, uh, software projects uh, tend to rethink or redesign the overall architecture of the solution, sometimes uh, like one to two weeks prior to the launch of the project or sometimes even later. So here I would like to specifically mention about one of the software design principles called separation of concerns. Now, separation of concerns basically helps uh, to divide uh, you know, a program into uh, distinct sections and then each section basically handles uh, you know, the separate concern. So here it is important for us to understand that these software design principles needs to be incorporated as early as possible in the software development life cycle. Now coming to the third block, which talks about the age in which we all live in, which is the age of automation, where we are mainly involved in using uh, more tools and accelerators uh, with the main uh, objective of reducing the overall cost and effort. So, you know, this is one of the benefits of being, uh, you know, in the age of automation. Now, before we move on to the main topic of the presentation, here is a short disclaimer. So this session is not about why to write clean code and neither does it try to answer the question about what is clean code or what is a clean architecture. And this session also doesn't, you know, provide any information about why don't software engineers write clean code. So the main objective of this session is to help uh, software developers to achieve uh, one of the tasks that most of them, uh, you know, even till today think is something far fetched. And if you happen to be one of those software developers, then perhaps you might have guessed it right. It's about writing clean code. So, uh, so here's, uh, you know, a short or a trimmed down version of a day in the life of a software developer. Now, software developer, you know, checks in his code uh, into a centralized repository and then uh, basically raises a pull request, uh, which is then uh, reviewed by a team internally by a team of developers. Now, these developers uh, provide, uh, you know, him the, uh, the feedback on a continuous basis uh, based on which he either refactors his code or modifies the logic. And this goes on uh, un, uh, you know, until the PR has been approved. And once the PR ad has been approved, it would basically uh, trigger some build scripts, which, which would basically in turn execute a pipeline. And that pipeline basically would then be uh, monitored by the DevOps team who would basically come into picture. And uh, especially when it comes to the monitoring of uh, the pipelines and the, the output of this uh, process would be a binary or an artifact as we may call it, which would be then deployed to uh, you know to a QA environment uh, and then the testing team would come into picture we would and they would basically be involved in testing uh, the app against the various uh, scenarios and they would they would also provide their feedback to the team uh, on a continuous basis now assuming all the issues have been you know fixed fixed and uh, there is no uh, potential uh, bottlenecks the testing team would uh, give a green signal saying that everything is fine and then the application would uh, you know finally go live or you can say go in production 
now the moment uh, you know this kind of situation comes in i think as software developers we all have experienced a moment uh, like this where uh, we are all happy about the fact that our uh, you know our code is finally working and it it feels that you have actually reached the pinnacle of success however if you are one of those uh, software developers who loves writing clean code then this really isn't the icing on the cake now there are a lot of drawbacks which is basically associated with this kind of approach where developers are here are mainly focused on making the solution work there's a less amount of time spent on refactoring of the code there are no unlimited uh, pre commit checks in place and there is always an ongoing debate on whether one should invest time in writing working code or whether one should invest time in writing maintainable code so in order to understand this in order to tackle these challenges let's uh, deviate uh, you know for some time from the world of technology to the world of human psychology now as a uh, humans we all develop habits now habits are something which are not developed overnight and writing clean code also needs to become a habit now what are the four stages of by which one can build a habit so i have listed them down uh, the mainly the four stages are cue craving response and reward so cue is nothing but something that uh, you know triggers the brain to initiate a behavior and it basically is uh, providing a bit of information about the the end reward craving is the motivational force uh, behind developing the habit the response actually forms the actual uh, you know it becomes the actual habit itself and the reward is of course uh, the the end result of developing this habit so let's say we have to we had to map this you know the four stages of building a habit in terms of writing clean code then we would actually come up with something like this where our queue basically would involve uh, removing of dead code finding of unused variables you know, automate the overall formatting of the code and apply certain custom rules the craving or the motivation would be to write maintainable code to maximize the refactoring of the code and of course to minimize the amount of bugs and in response we would actually go about using certain uh, certain techniques like git hooks and linting which i'll be talking about in the future slides as well and the rewards of developing this kind of habit would be plenty but then i would have listed down the top 3 which basically involves uh, achieving consistency uh, saving a lot of effort and of course improving the overall code quality so this basically this uh, you know this basically talks about how one can actually you know use uh, the four stages of habit and uh, use it to develop the habit of uh, writing clean code so the question now arises is that how do i actually go about developing this habit so the first step uh, in this process uh, is basically using husky and gitox now for those of you who are not aware husky is a popular npm package that allows developers to run scripts when doing specific actions and these act uh, these actions can be in the form of gitox and gitox basically are uh, nothing but scripts that run against a particular event uh, you know in a git repository so this can be like this can be any event like for example pre commit pre push these are some of the events that i have listed down but again it could be any uh, sort of event that uh, occurs in a git repository so how does one actually go about installing husky so to install husky one needs to basically run a simple command saying uh, s npx husky in it and this would actually uh, you know inject a prepare script in your package or json and would install the dependency uh, pretty straightforward uh, i would recommend using the latest version of husky but if you're one of those who you know is who's migrating maybe from a lower version to a higher version so here it is important to note that there have been uh, significant changes in the way uh, husky basically uh, now interacts and the whole thing the whole thing is now basically kept away from the js ecosystem so that is one of the advantages uh, you you get in the new version so i would definitely recommend using the new version so using this one can actually uh, install husky and uh, get started uh, with the with writing his first uh, pre commit hook so this is how a pre commit look would uh, you know would look like and uh, it's a very simple example where i have actually developed uh, or written uh, a pre commit uh, script in this case uh, which does uh, an es lint minus minus fix so this basically indicates that it would try to fix most of the issues uh, in terms of white spacing in terms of a variable declaration and uh, this will actually help me to enforce certain uh, basic checks before a developer uh, commits his code or pushes his code 
And uh, you, so this is basically one example, a very simple example of a pre commit hook, but then one could actually customize it based on his uh, project requirements as well. So, so here is, uh, you know, an example uh, by which one you can, one can actually use uh, Husky to actually create a pre commit hook and, uh, you know, enforce the developers to, to check in, uh, you know, valid code. Now I talked about ESLint and uh, this is basically an ESLint is I think one of the most popular uh, frameworks out there that allows developers to find uh, problems in their code without executing it. And prettier on the other end is an optional code formatter. So there are so many uh, code, for code formatters out there, but prettier is uh, prettier also is one of those uh, code formatters. And uh, one can install it using a simple uh, uh, yarn command as well. Now, for those of you who are uh, aware of ESLint, would also know that ESLint comes with a, you know, a lot of plugins that one can also install. And uh, in order to basically, uh, you know, leverage certain rules and certain additional uh, rules that can be added based on the plugin. And if you are one of those developers who uh, who also works on React, creating React JS applications, then uh, the good thing is that the Create React app uh, comes with uh, the ESLint config already built in. So there is uh, no additional you know dependencies that one needs to add unless uh, explicitly uh, required. So that is again you know one of the advantages that ESLint offers. Now using ESLint, as I mentioned, one can actually write certain rules now. These rules can be basically uh, can be can vary can be uh, for basic syntax validation can be for brace styles variable declaration etc. So it basically depends on the project needs, and uh, there are two ways by which one can configure ESLint. So one is basically by creating an ESLint RC uh, .js file or by adding the ESLint config field to the package.json file. So here I have gone with the first approach where I have actually created an ESLint rc.js file and included all the you know the rules which are applicable to my project. So as you can see uh, here, you can actually you know mention all the rules and based on uh, you know the requirements of the project, you can actually uh, customize it also as per your needs. So so this is a very basic example, but one can actually uh, you know extend it uh, to to handle different types of rules, be it for declaration of variables be it for uh, you know the brace styles etc so this is also something that one can uh, you know easily extend as well now coming to the next slide so we talked about uh, how code you know needs to be needs to be linted but then one of the most important uh, aspects of writing clean code is also commits now commit messages are also very very important especially if, if there are you know, software projects which have been going on for years and you know it is very important to for us to track the, the commit messages uh, done by other developers as well. And uh, for that, I would recommend also using a commit lint. So commit lint basically involves adding a valid and a meaningful commit messages to every commit that has been made. And uh, the main advantage of this is to ensure that everyone follows a particular standard in terms of, you know, when, when, when basically someone provides a commit message. So, so this is again, you know, one of the most, uh, I would say one of the most important things that we tend to neglect, but it's uh, going to help us in the long run as well. So for adding a uh, uh, you know, commit lint, one can also use uh, the command, which is I have mentioned below. So this is a simple command where one can actually uh, install the commit lint packages and also in the same way as ESLint can you know, configure certain rules as well for uh, the commit messages. So this is, uh, this is about commit lint. Now coming to the next slide, um, I, uh, I also also like to mention about the environment configurations. Now, environment configurations also play a very important role. Now, um, in terms of software developers, uh, they, they use different operating systems, be it Windows, uh, Linux, or maybe uh, Mac uh, as an operating system. So it is very, very important to check and manage the versions of dependencies. So usually in a dev environment, one typically does not run the npm install command until you know it's running the project for the first time, or there is some changes in the in the dependency itself. So you're basically to avoid this kind of issues, one could actually leverage the node version manager. So the node version manager actually helps you to manage the different node versions on your system. So you can actually uh, install a particular version of node so using the nvm install um, command, or and then you can actually use it using the nvm use command. So here, basically, the, the advantage that one could get is that you could actually minimize the, the issues that could occur because of a different version of Node or any different dependency version that could uh, that could come up later in the future. So this is also one of the important advantages. So uh, uh, coming to the end of the presentation, uh, here I would like to mention is that writing clean code definitely helps to improve efficiency. 
project teams need to focus on uh, you know more on the environmental setup and clean code configuration before the actual development starts and refactoring should be basically made a continuous process is what i feel so if you like to uh, have a look at the code and uh, you know try to have uh, you know customize it so please feel free to visit the link below and where i've uploaded the code and you can actually uh, you know try to customize it and come up with better and innovative solutions as well so uh, before i end the presentation I, uh, you know there's an interesting code that i found on the internet which says that every developer loves to write clean code yet not every developer writes code in the same way so that's about it uh, from my side uh, these are uh, some of the references uh, using which i uh, you know i based my presentation today and uh, once again thank you to the entire team of the reliable web summit and uh, enjoy the rest of the day hey it's joe eames with ngconf if you like that video be sure to click subscribe either here or here or somewhere over here and if you're looking for something more here's another video for you watch here or there or somewhere.